Okay, hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dick Clark. I'm at that other university here in Los Angeles and uh, uh, proud to be actually for the last 30 years or so. And I direct a research center called the Center for Cognitive Technology. We take questions uh, and go out and take a look at all the evidence about that question and try to answer it. The reason why we do it is that we have no horse in any race. We don't care how these reviews come out. We don't have a prior point of view. We let the evidence dictate what that is. And one of our specialties is research on instruction and training. As we've gone out and looked at current specific instructional programs that are available in both K-12 education and in higher education, we find that the features of the DataWorks program fits all of the research that we think is the best evidence right now. So what I'm here to do is to describe a bit of that research to you, tell you why we, we think that it melds very well with what DataWorks is doing. With that in mind, let me talk a little bit about this explicit direct instruction in these types of programs. First of all, uh, all instruction has at least two parts to it. The first part's curriculum. What are you gonna teach people? Uh, it, it, curriculum changes constantly, hourly minute by minute, actually, in a classroom. The second question is, how will it be taught? What type of instructional strategy or instructional method are you going to use? That, by the way, doesn't, the evidence is, shouldn't change all that much, no matter whether you're teaching children in kindergarten or whether you're teaching people in a doctoral program. So there are a couple of kinds of learning also, at least. One type is learning where people memorize things. Uh, they memorize concepts, definitions, they memorize facts, they remember processes, and so on. The other, th the other kind of learning, and it's a very different kind of learning, is, the, is skill learning. The, uh, any up knowledge that's applied, anything that you do, cognitively or physically, requires this more skill-type learning. So, here's the evidence from all of the well-designed studies that are out there. And that is that in order to learn to apply knowledge, which is much of what we're teaching students, it requires a very explicit and complete demonstration of all the steps that are required to perform the skill. Can I hold on that a second? All the steps. It means that we don't ask students to discover how to do things. It's also the case that after demonstration takes place, that you have to check for understanding. In other words, you have to challenge students to do it actively themselves and to mirror to some extent what they saw demonstrated and to receive, and here, notice the word immediate, extremely quick, as fast as possible, corrective feedback if they start to learn it wrong or do it wrong. I don't know how many of you have ever gone to, a, have been introduced to somebody and said their name wrong. You know, and then later try to rem and you get corrected and then later you meet the person and what comes to your mind first? It's usually the wrong name that you filed when you first met them. And it's the same with all wrong learning. Unlearning something is actually two times maybe harder than, than learning it right the first time. So this immediate corrective feedback then corrects that learning before it starts to ossify and be remembered easily and so on. So, so far, the evidence is pretty clear that discovery learning, constructivist learning, uh, inquiry learning, a variety of other approaches only works with a very small minority of students and it doesn't work for the rest. Now here's another thing, this is obvious, but not talked about very much when we talk about instruction, and that is that we have to have students' attention. They've got to be connecting what they're learning to uh, what they already know to make it meaningful. So this combination of things, demonstration, practice with engaging problems, immediate corrective feedback, and the constant maintaining of attention and Help students, helping students monitor their progress towards a learning goal, always. Those are the key elements that turn out in all of the research to be the most effective. We know, and there's very little dispute about what we know, that, that this more direct, engaging, explicit, guided instruction is the best for students. Then there's a moral 
and an ethical imperative to adopt it. We looked at approaches that were out there. The only one that we found, or that we have found yet, and we've been looking for a long time, that we feel fits all of these requirements is this data works approach. And that's why I'm here today. You owe it to yourself and to your students at least to give it a try. And what I'm here to do is to ask you to please consider doing that for your students.